Welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel. That is the R in the R case stumbling bear, and I am a reader and a writer. And I am back today to do a single book review for Down Below Beyond by T.A. Bruno. This is one of the books that my team book invasion for the self-published science fiction contest year three has chosen to read in full. This is a self-published science fiction book and as part of this contest we are all volunteer judges and the authors have applied and put their books into this contest. Nobody is getting paid. So this review is my personal opinions and as my fellow teammates review these books, I know at least one is doing single book reviews as well. I will link those down below so that you can see them. This book follows Levort Atra, who is a prospector on a world called Teax. And this world has been scavenged and picked over many times before, so it is very easy for prospectors to go broke not have anything and to go into debt it to the empire. This book opens up with Lavort finding a ship of some strange technology and making a claim on it so that nobody else can profit off of his find. Upon returning to the station on which he lives, he goes to sell one of the trinkets he has found on the ship and it isn't worth as much as he thought it would be, but still he thinks that he will make off all right from this ship. When he goes back the next day, the ship is gone. Instead, there is a crater. And he is devastated because this means he is now himself going into debt to the Empire, which is not a place that anybody really wants to be. Grasping for straws, he sees a flash of light and he follows it, leaving behind his enforcer, who is also his childhood friend. Livort ends up discovering a bigger world afoot. I mean, his goal is always to get what he calls a Class S license so then he can visit other planets. So Livort ends up making new friends and discovering different planets in the universe around him in a way that he never thought he was going to before. And then also learning how the Empire really does not have its citizens' best interests at heart. In fact, it has a secret that it is trying to keep from all of them. And Befo, Lavort's childhood best friend, we also get a point of view from him as he has accepted the lie that the Empire has given, and then he's trying to find Lavort in order to quote-unquote save him from a cult. So that's a general synopsis of that. Where Bruno shines in his writing is in his world building and his descriptions of the planets. The, his settings feel real. Getting to describe the different aliens is great. And something that he does that I love is he has put some pictures at the front so then he can describe some of the aliens like the de Tuppens, vaguely or with enough detail that you could tell this is what the character himself is focused on but then you as the reader can still go look at the picture and be like oh that's what they look like and I think that was a more genuine way of writing the characters because you know Lavort has known these other aliens his whole life they're not going to seem as strange to him, so he's not going to go into a full, like, oh, let me describe them. But the reader needs to know what they look like. And this is a way for those characters to be described in a way that is consistent with people who would know what everybody else looks like already. So like I said, he shines on his world building. I think where Bruno has the most trouble is with his characters. His characters are are very unique. They're from all different races or species. 
of aliens. However, with the dialogue, a lot of the characters sound like each other. In fact, there's many times where I'd have to reread a page specifically looking for the character tags with speech to know who was saying what, because the word choices were the same no matter which character it was. And I think the issues with the dialogue also then led into Bruno kind of beating you over the head sometimes with making sure the reader understands what is happening. It, for example, at one point, Lavort thinks to himself, oh, I'm going to play dumb, and then he says something to play dumb, and then his friend Bafo is like, I know that you're playing dumb. I've known you for this many years. That could have been cleaned up a lot. We didn't need to have him, one, tell us that he was going to play dumb. We've already, By this point, we already know his character, so we know what he's going to do. He could have just said his line of dialogue, and then you could have had Bafo's reaction. Because that would have made sense if you've known somebody forever. You, you know when they're playing dumb. And that's just one example. It, there's several times in the book where the character thinks, oh, I'm going to do this, and then it's described how they do that. In some of those instances, I don't think Bruno needed to have the character think anything. He could have just described what the character did. As readers, we are intelligent. We, we can figure these things out, especially when a character smirks. We know that a smirk is not a joyous thing. We know that means that somebody thinks they they're one up on somebody else. I don't need it spelled out. So that I think was his biggest flaw. However, paired next to his greatest strength, his descriptions, it doesn't detract from the story. And the plot is solid. It's an interesting plot of exploring the universe and finding a found family, which I always love to the point where this is a very enjoyable read. Whenever I was reading it, I was reading it in large chunks. Like I just kept turning the page and turning the page and turning the page. So I think this is brilliant for those who are starting off in science fiction, never have read it before, or even just starting off reading period. This would be a great place to start them. Also for those who like adventure sci-fi, you know, Lavort basically goes on a quest, even though it's not really called a quest. He ends up on one anyway. And if you love found family aspects of stories, I think one of my favorite characters is Savodin, who has a very unique perspective on the world. And yeah, it's just a lot of fun. I'm very glad that we get to read this in full for our team. And I can't wait to find out how my other teammates feel about it. Again, this is Down Below Beyond by T.A. Bruno. And stay tuned because we will have other reviews coming for the books that we are reading for consideration for our semifinalists.